And welcome back to the fourth episode of Food for Thought. In our last episode, we discussed how World War II impacted mealtimes on the home front. In this episode, we'll be headed overseas to find out what our men in uniform are chewing on. There have been some much welcome changes since World War I. Soldiers are now able to get more variety in their meals and some other goodies too. But it's no picnic. While there is more food variety for soldiers in the field, and that hot chocolate this lieutenant is making does seem yummy, the best meals are still to be had when stationed in camp. As you can see in this image, soldiers in combat are still using open fires to heat meals from cans. The cans, of course, remain a burden to carry. Lovingly called sea rats by U.S. soldiers, sea rations were the main source of nutrition when in the field. They consisted of a variety of entrees and sides, M units and B units, along with an accessory pack. Accessories included items like chewing gum, cigarettes, matches, and toilet paper. You know, the essentials. M units and B units varied from meal to meal but typically contained a meat and vegetable in the M unit can and biscuits, think crackers, dessert and a beverage in the B unit cans. At least that hardtack is gone. C rations developed in 1938 were individual meals that the men carried with them into the field, replacing the reserve rations of World War I. They could be eaten cold, but tasted better when warm. Each soldier received six cans per day, two for each meal. The cans were 12 ounces each, which made for a heavy load. And just like during the First World War, there was some monotony in the food choices. K-rations were also developed during World War II in the year 1941. These rations were used for short-duration missions and combat. K rations consisted of less calories than the C rations, and the meals came in boxes instead of cans, making them easier to transport. The decorative boxes seen here were first released in 1944 in an effort to boost morale. Unfortunately, they still contain mostly the same things, a canned meat, biscuits, again, think crackers, a powdered drink, and some sort of dessert. Like sea rations, they also included some of those other essential items. <clears throat> well, anyway, now on to something as tasty as a boiled potato. I mean, that's how you like your chocolate bars to taste, right? Well, if that's your pleasure, let me introduce you to the Logan Bar, or the D-Ration. In 1937, Colonel Paul Logan, director of experiments at the subsistence school, met with William Murray, then president of Hershey Chocolate Corporation and chemist, about developing a chocolate bar for an emergency ration. Weighing in at four ounces, this candy bar held 1,800 calories for a day's ration. Colonel Logan was concerned if the bar tasted too good, it would be eaten like candy. And yes, the requirements for this candy bar really included that it should taste only slightly better than a boiled potato. Yum. Luckily, when soldiers were not in the field or combat, they were able to receive cooked meals with more variety and taste. Canteens and garrison kitchens often received items sent from the States, including things like Coca-Colas and real chocolate bars. In this photo, men stationed in Australia wait in line at the post canteen to pick up letters from home and some goodies to snack on. Sometimes freshly cooked meals were able to travel outside of camp to the field using the M1937 ovens. The ovens were small and lightweight enough to both be stationary in a kitchen or to be put in the back of a truck and taken out to the field. M1937 ovens were versatile. They could be used to grill, 
boil, roast, and bake with slight alterations in their setup. This soldier is certainly happy to have a meal delivered to him at the front on Thanksgiving. Meals made in a camp kitchen or further back from the front lines were sometimes delivered to the men at front. It was important that they be fed nutritious and tasty meals whenever possible. Remember the old saying, an army marches on its stomach. Join us for our last episode in this series where we take a taste of meals ready to eat also known as MREs. Packaged meals with self-heating capability and a much bigger menu. As a bonus, our director Stephen McAteer will be joining me for the taste test. You think they'll be any good? Now that's some food for thought.